everyone. Welcome to the next episode of Virtual Workflow series. Today's episode is about a patient who presented with weight loss and jaundice. Let's look at the scan now. In this patient, we performed CT scan of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis with intravenous contrast due to suspicion of malignancy, as this patient had considerable weight loss and raised bilirubin. So let's start looking at the scan now. Generally, when I start looking at a scan where I have no clue where I can find the primary, although in this particular case, I have a suspicion that it will be something related to the biliary system. But generally, I scroll down rather quickly and try to find any gross abnormality. For instance, here you can see that there is dilated biliary tree. I'll ignore it for a moment and then keep looking at the scan to look for any other gross abnormality. So grossly, I didn't see anything other than this biliary dilatation. Now let's assess this biliary dilatation in a bit more detail. Well, first of all, you can see that the biliary dilatation is involving both right and left lobes of the liver. And it's not just intrahepatic biliary dilatation. The CBD also appears prominent. So in a patient presenting with weight loss and intra and extrahepatic biliary dilatation, we need to look for any abnormality around the distal end of CBD. And another important thing, we need to look for presence of pancreatic ductal dilatation. So how does pancreas looks like? There is clearly no pancreatic ductal dilatation. Hmm. Okay, so let's follow CBD more slowly to see if we find any soft tissue thickening or enhancement along its distal part. It would be useful to refresh your knowledge of the causes of CBD obstruction in adults. Uh, obviously, one thing is stones. We don't see any radio-opaque stones in gallbladder or CBD, but obviously there can still be radiolucent cholesterol stones. But what worries me is no indication of right upper quadrant pain, because in the event of biliary colic, you generally do find history of pain in the right upper quadrant. Then again, there is history of weight loss as well, isn't it? but definitely radiolucent stones remains one possibility. Then we can potentially see CBD dilatation with cholangitis. And also if there are some enlarged lymph nodes impressing upon the distal CBD that can also produce obstruction. And then we can't forget the possibility of a pancreatic head tumor or cholangiocarcinoma as the potential cause of biliary dilatation, especially in an adult who has presented with weight loss. So what do you think is the cause of this biliary dilatation? Let's look at the scan in the coronal reformat. All right, again, we see biliary dilatation. This is CVD. There is possibly some thickening in the distal end of CVD, but it's not very clear, is it? Well, what's happening here? Do you see a cuff of soft tissue around some vessels here? Which vessels are these? Well, this is probably the celiac axis and this is the superior mesenteric artery. Now let's go back to our axial images and again look at this area more carefully. All right, yeah, there is definitely some soft tissue thickening around the celiac axis. Do you see? this low density area which surrounds the celiac axis as well as its branches and then this thickening further extends around the superior mesenteric artery as well hmm. so this feature is definitely concerning it's not a normal finding it's not a normal variant either so what do you think is happening well we have biliary obstruction no pancreatic ductal dilatation but an ill-defined soft tissue thickening around the superior mesenteric artery and celiac axis. Let's look at the pancreatic head again. So this is the pancreatic tail, body, and then head. Well, head looks slightly bulky as compared to body and tail, but we don't see any definite mass in there. And again, there is no pancreatic ductal dilatation. And this soft tissue thickening, this is quite diffuse. And in this area, it appears to be inseparable from the pancreatic neck, isn't it? So one possibility coming to my mind is 
a pancreatic tumor which is not clearly seen on the CT scan let me tell you it can happen uh, this is not a pancreatic protocol study we did not do imaging in triple phase and also the pancreatic tumors can be very subtle but having no ductal dilatation pancreatic ductal dilatation is a bit strange and unusual isn't it however this cuff of soft tissue thickening around the celiac axis and superior mesenteric artery is an indirect sign of pancreatic malignancy but let me tell you here it is not specific to pancreatic cancer this soft tissue thickening can also be seen with neuroendocrine tumors some metastatic lymph nodes lymphoma or uh, perhaps in cases of chronic pancreatitis or um, retroperitoneal fibrosis i would exclude the possibility of retroperitoneal fibrosis and chronic pancreatitis in this patient because if you look at the pancreas there are no signs of chronic pancreatic inflammation i mean there is no ductal dilatation and there are no calcifications or distortion of the pancreatic parenchyma and so far the retroperitoneal fibrosis is concerned i don't see any soft tissue thickening below that level and obviously there is no urinary obstruction either so i am definitely worried about malignancy in a patient with biliary obstruction weight loss raised bilirubin and this ill defined soft tissue around the celiac axis and superior mesenteric artery my first concern is pancreatic cancer because pancreatic cancer can have perineural and perivascular spread and the main side of the tumor might not be visible but its extension along the blood vessels becomes more visible due to abundant fat in this area but my differentials would definitely include neuroendocrine tumors or lymphoma however pattern of biliary obstruction suggests that to be more likely pancreatic or biliary primary so what else could be possible yet another differential is a cbd tumor itself cholangiocarcinoma is another thing which can obviously especially considering that this is isolated biliary obstruction and there is no pancreatic ductal obstruction cholangiocarcinoma is another possibility although this pattern of soft tissue thickening is rather less common with cholangiocarcinoma however malignancy is not always read books so my interpretation of these findings would be possibility of pancreatic cancer or a cholangiocarcinoma so let's say it turns out to be a pancreatic cancer how would you stage this tumor any pancreatic tumor if it involves the celiac axis or superior mesenteric artery it's a t4 disease isn't it so t4 is definite if this turns out to be pancreatic cancer next thing we need to look for is the lymph nodes we see some lymph nodes here isn't it these are small how big are they let's measure them in the short axis the largest lymph node here measures 0.7 cm which is not very big is it so these lymph nodes could potentially be reactive now let's try to look for any other lymph nodes do you see some lymph nodes here at porta hepatis well my threshold for calling porta hepatic lymph nodes malignant is a bit high because you can normally see porta hepatic lymph nodes and they can be pretty big but given suspicion of malignancy in this patient we can't exclude lymphomatous involvement uh, for instance this lymph node measures 1.4 cm which is definitely size significant there is another lymph node adjacent to it which is probably uh, it's 9.7 mm so up to a centimeter in size again it's uh, borderline significant so if this turns out to be cancer my staging so far would be t4 and 1 now let's try to look for any metastatic disease with pancreatic cancer first area that we need to look for is the liver itself because that's where the metastases go most commonly the liver looks all right other than the biliary dilatation that we discussed earlier now i'll look at all the areas in the abdomen and pelvis i'll look for any non-regional lymph nodes in the periotic planes or elsewhere on the study i'll also look for any peritoneal or mesenteric metastases which is another common finding with advanced pancreatic cancer i don't see any bowel obstruction i don't see any free fluid ascites or fluid collections and everything looks fine so no definite metastatic disease within the abdomen and pelvis and one other thing that we need to look for is any vascular thrombosis pancreatic cancers have a strong association with vascular occlusions vascular thrombosis um, one reason is direct tumor infiltration the other reason is pancreatic cancer produces a prothrombotic state so we would look for any 
vascular occlusion. The portal vein looks all right. Splenic vein is also patent. And then superior mesenteric vein, rest of the vessels are all unremarkable. Okay, after that we would assess the lungs and uh, any metastatic nodules, pleural effusions, or any other significant finding. We don't see any definite thing. We don't see any definite evidence of metastases in lungs either. I would look at the mediastinal windows to rule out any distant non-regional thoracic lymph nodes, and I don't see any. And next thing that we need to look at is the bone windows. So there are no lytic or sclerotic suspicious bone lesions throughout the skeleton. It's always useful to look at the sagittal and coronal reformats. We see some degenerative changes with some osteophytes and some end plate changes, but no metastases. Similarly, the coronal reformat is also unremarkable. So the conclusion of this report would say likely T4, N1, M0 pancreatic cancer. The differential possibility is cholangiocarcinoma. In either case, as this patient has biliary obstruction, he would benefit from biliary drainage. He might need to have a stent placed in the CBD and uh, he also needs definitely a biopsy to confirm the diagnosis. And given we didn't see any definite tumor within the pancreatic head, this patient might benefit from a PET CT as well. This is the end of today's episode of Virtual Workflow Series. Hope you found it useful. Thank you for joining me in this tutorial. If you found it helpful, please like, share and subscribe for more content. For any questions or feedback, feel free to drop a comment below. Until next time, happy learning.